you know, have a quick look at the uh, Palo Alto config. First of all, the topology, right? So very quickly. Okay, so we've got the BP server here connected to switch one, which connects to the Palo Alto, which connects to this Cisco ASA. Again, another switch, and then the uh, the Windows uh, client, which is basically in the place of the PLC here. And that's the one that's actually going to be, I guess, requesting an IP address. Um, in terms of the configs all around, I think we've got the configs there. I guess the interesting one is probably having a look at the uh, Palo Alto configuration here. So let's just quickly walk through that one. So again, probably interesting is that um, we've got this um, Gigabit Ethernet 00, zero which is uh, basically being called the PCN interface. So this is the one here. And this sub-interface here, the um, G01.90, is being set up as a sub-interface um, and called sub-C. So if you can have a look in here, the main interface doesn't, doesn't have an IP address. The sub-interface has been given an IP address. The, it's been named sub-C and given a security level. All the other interfaces are not connected. So the only other in interesting thing in here is, um, I guess, the um, the access list. You've got a couple of access lists in here which are not actually configured. We're just using for testing. But there's an important one. So we've got PCN inbound, which basically allows, you know, any ping track, any ping from anywhere to anywhere. And this one here, which basically allows UDP coming from uh, this is the return traffic, right? So this is the, any UDP coming from, I guess, the BP server. Okay, so uh, coming back and uh, coming through here on that PCN interface and uh, heading out anywhere on the network. So that's what you can see here. Okay, so coming from host 192.168.10.10, going anywhere. And uh, again, that boot PC really just means UDP port 68. And uh, on the way in, you can see there is another related um, ACL, which is this sub-C inbound. Again, this one will basically allow pins from anywhere to anywhere, just so it makes it easier to configure the lab. And the other one in here is basically allowing, okay, from any any host uh, on the network to basically um, get to uh, basically our BP server, which is 192.168.10.10, okay, using uh, UDP 67, which is what that WPS means. All the other interesting things that we've got in here uh, are there's two. So first of all, the router, router OSPF stuff, and then there's the DHCP relay stuff, uh, which is also somewhere in here. I guess if we just do a so run. Okay, so these are the, the important things that we've got to do to make sure that um, we pass the, the DHCP relay traffic on, okay? And, um, and that's pretty much it. These are the key things that we've done on the ASA firewall. So on the Palo Alto, um, again, probably the important things are here. So first of all, the uh, DHCP part. So if you go to DHCP here, where there's the HCP server, the HCP relay, and you can have a look in here. There's a basic configuration, okay, where we're basically saying Ethernet 1, 2. So anything that we receive, I guess, on that, um, again, this Ethernet 1, 2, we basically want to forward it out into 192.168.10.10. So you can see that's what that configuration there does. That's the DHCP relay part done. Again, if we have a look at uh, policies, and again, very similar security policies to what the other one was. So first of all here, we've got these allow BP, which is again, uh, bi-directional rules being set up. Okay, so source can be anywhere on the uh, smart tools or sub C untrusted. And again, the destination, so any, any traffic going between the two. And again, there's no application, but we've actually used a, um, a service in here, and if you have a look under objects, and we have a look at uh, services. Okay, so we've got a boot peak service in here, and that's just been set up as UDP port 67 or 68. Okay, and that works. Um, 
what else have we done in here that's interesting? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, then the policies. Oh, just having a look at the um, OSPF configuration. So again, if we go to virtual routers, you can see um, sometime soon. Okay, so we've got a um, like a virtual router called default. Okay, and under OSPF, it's uh, participating in OSPF uh, on area 0.0.0.0. So unlike Cisco, you can't just name the area as 0, as zero as, otherwise it doesn't work. You've got to do it that way. It's got to be a quadratic decimal format. And here you basically just have uh, the uh, network ranges that you're advertising. So again, these are the interfaces that we've connected through. So we've got you know, 10.0 slash 24, and again, 10.0 slash 30 for these two interfaces, and that's pretty much what we're advertising out. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, you probably just have a quick look at interfaces as well. So again, you can have a look in here that we've got a sub interface. So we've got Ethernet 11 uh, and a sub interface dot 10, okay, which is again, it's a layer three interface. It's on a management profile, which allow pings, again, just to make it simpler for us. And um, it has been tagged as a VLAN uh, 10. And again, it's part of the security zone smart tools. And then we've got Ethernet 1.2, which is, I guess, that slash 30 going to the uh, Cisco ISA firewall. And that's the sub C untrusted. You know, and I basically just said, okay, so this is, uh, this is sub C, this is PCN, but on this side, this becomes sub C on trusted and this becomes PCN. Pretty much it. So now if we have a, a quick look at how this thing works. So first of all, if we start off in here, okay, on this, um, the Windows, for whatever reason, I don't know why that's not bringing that up right, so down yeah, here, yeah. all right. So if we go to that Windows machine at the very top, that's the one that's actually running the uh, the BrickP server. So if we go in here, right, we can uh, first of all have a look at the network setup. Okay, and again, we've uh, you can, the good thing about this particular um, BrickP server is that it allows it to specify a default gateway. Okay, and um, for this particular network that we're on. And again, you can even put DNS servers. So there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do here. So once you've done that, then the other important thing is to actually go and edit the assignment table. So here, for example, if we go to the other Windows machine, it's actually going to be requesting the um, IP address. We have a look at details, and you can see here that the physical address here, the 58AEC002700, has to match whatever we've got defined in here. And here we see we've got an IP address. And just to prove that this actually works, I'm gonna pick the next IP address or pick another IP address from the one that was there before. Okay, so we've got, um, you know, before it was 225, but we're gonna to go to 230. So now if we go in here, and we, um, first of all, have a look at um, disabling that interface. Okay, and then we're gonna quickly enable it. And we can see there it's identifying and it's been given an IP address that quickly. Okay, so here's status. Oops, wrong thing. So if we go to status, details, you can see that it's now been given the 230 IP address. Effectively, what we've been able to demonstrate is that we've got BoyP going across, you know, two layer three devices and they've both been configured appropriately to allow that to happen. And uh, yeah, that's, Pretty much all that uh, that I wanted to demo. So, all right, all the configs and everything will be made available for us to actually recreate this in the proper lab.